So Jeff has a uh, question that he, you know, I put I put the the uh, Facebook page. Go ahead and ask your question if you got something you want to attack today. So Jeff puts in there that. He wants to know key benchmarks to look for when letting others take over stuff in your business. When hiring employees, and his second question, I guess, when hiring employees is a honeymoon stumble, then take off normal or do a winner's just grow. I don't understand the, that sentence there. If Derek, you read this before, decipher what he's asking. I, I, I feel like what's going on here is like when you hire an employee is if you're going to go through that honeymoon stage and like everything's cool. And then all of a sudden you experience the real uh, personalities, the real problems, the, the, the pitfalls. And then is it normal for them to take off after that? And I think he's saying do a winners like a players just grow. So you hire an A player, you go through a honeymoon stage, have some difficulties, but do they potentially take off and flourish after that? Um, if the honeymoon stumble is normal, how long does one expect that each stage to last? So I see it as you hire an A player, everything's fantastic in the beginning, and then all of a sudden you reach this point where things are getting a little weird, and then hopefully they they blossom and take off. So how long does that take? Honeymoon stumble to take off. So Steve, in your experience dealing with A players or Tom. What's the honeymoon period typically look like with an A player? Well, we always hire with a, uh, there's a window. You know, there is a review window. And it might be 30, 60, or 90 days. With us, we do it seasonally. Because we'll know, for instance, if we hire someone by, by March 1st, we might give them three months. Because trust me, March, April, May, by the end of May, we will know this person's work ethic. So we give everybody an out, and including ourselves, after 90 days. So you could pick your – your. Uh, it's just a probationary period, and they, I think most employers do this. And so it doesn't matter if they turn out to be the A player or the C player because we all know one thing. No matter how good we are at interviewing, God, it always seems 50-50 if they're going to work out or not, you know? Um, so – there is a probationary period that you should definitely have when you hire anybody and you tell them that's so they can walk away from you just with no questions asked. Also, if it's not working out after 90 days for them, boom, they get to walk away just like you get to walk away. So is it fair to say in a 90 day period, you're going to experience the honeymoon maybe in the first month and then the, or the first 30 days? The second 30 days could be some awkwardness, could be some stumbling. And then hopefully in the remaining 30 days that they're probably kind of going, OK, we know whether they're going to take off or they're not. So it's kind of if I'm understanding this question and understanding what you're, you're saying, Steve, it, it's about 90 days. You're going to experience all three of these. And at that point, if they are truly an A player, they're going to take off. Yes. And th there's a caveat in there, though. I believe in myself being a guy that screwed this up mightily in the first half a dozen years I was in business, that I did such a crappy job onboarding and training people mm -hmm. that I didn't even really give them a fair shot. Maybe, you know, everybody's good for 30 days. And then I was expecting them to do a job to which I trained them poorly to do. So you have to make sure you're upholding your end of the bargain so you give these people a fair shot because when they first come into your company they don't know anything about anything basically and they're going to learn it from you and if you're a poor teacher a terrible leader and that's what they're going to learn terrible stuff so i call the a player the fw the winner that's what i call them and an fw is already an fw um, they have the character of somebody who's already a winner they're going to win no matter what they do. If they go work at a hot dog stand, if they work for you, if they start their own business, um, they're going to win. Doesn't mean they're not going to make mistakes and have a learning curve. So I think first right out of the gate, an A player is already an A player. FW is already an FW. You just got to, Jeff, you're going to have to level up some skills. Um, you know, you can hire a guy with zero industry experience who's an FW. He just needs the right structure around him 
like Steve was talking how Steve, I remember years ago you talking, everyone's like, Oh, you're so lucky. You have Mike and Andrew. You're so lucky. You have Mike and Andrew. And you're like, man, I burned through 50 of those guys before I got my together as an owner. And so we, we often drive away most FWs right out of the gate because a true FW is not going to stay in a company that doesn't have a clear future mapped out of how they can grow. Um, I'm an FW. I will not come to work for somebody or stay there if I don't see where I can continue to grow and win. So number one, you guys got to have, you know, Jeff, you got to have a clear path or mastery ladder, I call it, or whatever you want to call it in your business of, you know, hey, I'm here now. What's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? Second part of that is we have to do our part as owners to train them the skills that are specific for our industry and for their jobs. So it might be a CRM, it might be how to run jobs and bring them in at our gross profit goals. It could be um, you know, the sales process, whatever it might be, we have to invest in training. We had, uh, when I had my painting company in Chicago, um, we were, um, we had three foremen, three crew, crew leaders, we call them, that were rock stars. And they were great human beings. They were respectful human beings. This is where we hired properly. We hired the right character. They were already FWs, but we had to give them the skills. And Jeff, it took, we had weekly crew meetings, crew leader meetings, and, and we had them forever once we started doing them. We didn't miss them. And it was a good year and a half of paying them to come to the crew leader meetings and we would go over the previous week's jobs, the upcoming jobs. We'd do a little training on word tracks for upsells or how to best approach painting a certain type of room. I mean, it was a, you know, there was safety training. We invested heavily in that. And, um, and so, and it cost a lot of money. It cost a lot of time. Um, but the good news is not one of those guys left because they felt that we were investing in them. We had their backs and things like that. So I don't think there is a honeymoon stage for a true FW in that's my short answer. <laughs> Cause they're already one. This sounds like a good time for me to tell the Dan, Dan Clark story. Dan Clark is a, he's owned his own pool company now for over 20 years. And I don't know what they do five or $10 million a year. If they build pools, they have a lifeguard service. And basically he was my right hand man and one of my lieutenants in my swimming pool days. And when he first came to work for me, and he was an FW, he first came to work for me. He showed up a day earlier than I thought. He showed up on time, but I thought it was another day, the day the day later. And so when he got there, and I was still trying to micromanage everything, and I was just not focused. And he came in there, and I said, man, I don't know what to do with this guy. So I took him out to our warehouse in our parking lot, and I handed him a broom. And I said, here, do me a favor. This place is a hole. Clean up the warehouse the best you know how and sweep up the parking lot. And he spent all day long in his head thinking, God, this is so sh it has to be a test. Steve is testing me. He's seeing how tough I am and what I'm made of. And I'm going to show that. I'm going to be around tomorrow and I'm going to pass his test. Well, it wasn't a test at all. It was just dumbass Steve just going, oh, my God, I got I to gotta put a book marker in this guy somehow. Here's a broom. Stay busy. And literally, he went from 8 o'clock in the morning to finally around four o'clock in the afternoon he knocks on my office door in the building and goes steve i'm done cleaning up the warehouse and the parking lot what else do you need me to do and i went out there and damn if he didn't do that and i said look i i'm sorry but that's the way it is show up tomorrow morning at 8 30 and then i put him on a crew and actually went out with him and that started the real training but here is a situation to prove tom's point i think is that i took a fw and because he was an FW, he made it through that training process. But what I put him through is probably more typical of how most people train their people. They don't really train them at all. They just bring them in and hope somehow they know the family secrets and they can figure this shit on their own. And But only, I don't know, for the grace of whoever you want to say, 
this man worked out. And of course, after I left, he started his own company and he's killing it the whole time. But um, there's a story to tell you how what an idiot I used to be and how I lucked out. And it, <laughs> and it, it isn't all luck. Well, Stephen, this starts with, we don't have a hiring plan. We don't take the time to go. And when I say plan, guys, you got to have, you got to have your non-negotiable values of who gets to work at your company. Okay. So like, you know, one of mine is anyone that's going to be like a business partner of mine, employee of mine, uh, um, a, uh, a, a vendor of mine, meaning like a provider or somebody I, I outsource to or whatever. First and foremost, they have to be a overall a positive human being, right? I, um, I value that. I value people that are competitive. I value people that, um, you know, have a, um, have a mindset of just go for it. Like I do not want people on my team that are not somewhat entrepreneurial. I don't want them being the type of person that always feels like they have to ask for permission. I want them to know that they're trusted. Like these are some non-negotiable things that are important to me. And guys, when you hire with those things in mind and you, you work your interview questions around those things, you're going to be more likely to bring them into your company and they're already aligned with the values that you have personally as the owner. And it's much easier than to simply just train a few skills and those skills. And I don't, I don't mean to minimize the skills. Some of these skills that we have take 20 years to develop, but I'm saying you don't want to waste your time with somebody who's not the right character right out of the gate. Everybody says, oh, hire for character and train for aptitude, right? That's an old hiring thing. Well, a lot of guys don't know how to hire. So one example might be, um, you know, if you have a non-negotiable in your company of, like I said, being positive, then an interview question might be, hey, Steve, tell me about a time in the last week or two where you really had to intentionally stay positive about something. Maybe you got blindsided by something. You get, you took it on the chin with something. What, what did that look like? That, that's an example question. Or everybody says, oh, I'm really good at providing customer service, right? Okay, well, share an example with me in the last couple months at your last position, you know, where you demonstrated great customer service. Or another thing that's important to me is I only want, I mean, if you look at, the, I'm looking at, the, my two partners on the screen here with me, I'm looking at all three of us. We are people that are highly, highly, highly intentional about personal development, okay? And getting better as a person. And that's not by accident, okay? And so if, I'm inter if that's important to me that somebody is the type of person that wants to grow and get better and like that, if, if an interview question might be, hey, Derek, share something that you've been working on in your character over the last, you know, six months. What's that look like? Guys, it, it's really no different than Shin Fu in a lot of ways. We're just using a different context. And so, and somebody who, you could tell if somebody's bull, okay? You can totally tell if somebody's, if they're not into personal development and you ask a question, hey, what are you doing to work on yourself and make yourself a better person? They're gonna be sharing things like, you know, like Steve would be like, well, I'm in the middle of this 75 hard thing right now and it's really kicking my ass, you know? And it's a daily grind for me to go through this. Um, when you start asking for specific examples of the things that are important to you, you're gonna be more likely to bring on that FW.